y 9 de ellos de Chor, en centro. Y bueno, pues a la Universidad de Guía Fiel Quincel y ahí pues trabajamos muchas cosillas. Y una de las nuevas empresas, por parte de los partidos profesionales, en el primer área secundaria, es la atención a la diversidad, ¿no? A estos alumnos que sí que pues quedan un poco más atrasados. La idea de hoy es, yo no puedo venir a vender moto, ¿verdad? Ni esa es mi intención. Aunque venga moto, pero no es mi intención venir a vender la moto, sino hacer, reflexionar un poco sobre algo que tenemos y quizás quizás a lo mejor alguna pauta que pudiera hacer arrancar una idea nueva. Tampoco hay más o menos, esto que se hace, porque no hay características como una. Se la noche de su gente, ¿sabes? Yo soy el presidente de la gente. This is my name, but I don't know how many of you are. You have three sets here. Three sets. <laughs> three sets. Thank you so much. Yeah, three more, yeah. Yeah, three. Okay. So, the idea is to well, talk about this. This is innovation in Marimbo, secondary education. Um, and in terms of terms, we have to find if we know where we are. Maybe we know we are in Puerto Canal, we have these uh, summer courses, but we to know where we are. And then the first thing I want to know is the special listings. Uh, someone told me that uh, some of you are English teachers. Go please. Raise your hands. Can you get an idea? Good. Arts? Arts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. And uh, European history? No. No. <laughs> French, technology one. French? No? Any other subjects? Maths? Maths? Two? P. P. Physical education. We have one, two, three. Good. And. Uh, business administration. Okay, business administration. Good. That's good. So you get to more or a secondary? Both? And vocational training. Okay, so, I mean, we have a wide variety, we have a wide range of teachers, I'm sorry? Biology. Biology and? Biology, Biology also. Who else? Technology. 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 Physical Biology. Education. Biology. Biology also, good. And? Did I miss anyone? Music. Music, good. Good. Let's see if we have musicians around. And uh, anything else? Uh, Any other specialisms? Uh, Economy? German. German? <laughs> good. German. Good. German. 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 Okay, good. Where are you from? Where do you teach? In where do you teach? In a private school, Castellón. Castellón, good. Okay, and you use German as a language to introduce concepts or? Okay, so it's only for as a foreign language. Good. Okay, that's good to know also, because we are, you have teachers who teach English, English. And teachers who teach from English. And that makes a big difference. That's a huge difference. In terms of what? In terms of level, for example. So we teach in a bilingual school, and we will see the difference between bilingual or, we should say bilingual or um, clear school. We have the teacher of English which has this level, and it's always focused on mainly with grammar, vocabulary, phonetics, and functions of the language, and we use all the things to make students be able to communicate in a foreign language. And then we have you the teachers of non-linguistic subjects, who are going to use English as a medium to introduce concepts. This is a hard task. It's a really hard task. Because it is hard to teach in Spanish, but it's even harder to teach in English. I mean, that's, that's life, that's real. So the first questions that I want to ask you today are this. How happy? I want you to interact. I want you to tell me your ideas. Try to be positive. If you're not positive, try to be you. Okay. Can you have to sustain your ideas? How happy are you with our bilingualism? Do you think that we are on the right goals? Can I know? Can I know? Yeah, that's a good answer. Can I know? So, so, why not? Okay, can I know? Can I know if it's positive or negative? Uh, half positive. Positive. I mean, if we are here, if we are here, where are you from? Are you there? Are we using English or French or German?
them in our provision tools. Tuning to use contents and are we succeeded? Are we happy with how this works? Or we have politicians doing these uh, policies that are far from reality. So I want to know your opinions about experience. Your opinion of this. Are you happy with how this is working? I don't know. You don't know? Okay, maybe I don't know means. I like to be happy. I mean, I'm happy, I can't can be happy. But we have to work hard on this. And for that, we need what? Training. And you are people who come here, you are not on holidays now, you're not under the sun, you're here, which is a nice temperature, by the way. And you want to be trained. And you are spending your time to be trained. That makes also a difference with some teachers who still complain. So your idea is really important. I mean, what do you think about this? It's really important. Because you are really concerned with this. Maybe your idea is not very possible. It doesn't matter. You have your idea and you work out of this to improve it. You can come here to get things worse. You can here to start working a bit better. So, what are we, are we having? Are you going to give me an answer to this? Yeah, it was. For Indian and uh, this has been my first year mm -hmm. teaching English and biology. That's why it was my first year. So. And, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so, first year and bilingual. And bilingual Both. Yeah. And then I have uh, some uh, some doubts in terms of uh, the contrary. In, in some cases, I, I felt that uh, we were losing some content content due to the fact that we were reading English. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just uh, another difficulty for some uh, uh, for some students. I mean, it's good because they are uh, training uh, their English, they are working in English, they are doing presentation in English. But everything is. Uh, uh, much slower, I mean, and the difference in, in the level, English level, was so high that mm -hmm. they took a lot of the people. Here we find what we call the pendulum effect. <coughs> we find people who are absolutely enthusiastic, who are really, I mean, I heard the teacher saying, bilingualism changed my life. He said that. <laughs> I mean, I think that's too much, to be too much. I mean, you can change your life because it makes you around. See that you can use the language to good positive things. But then we have on the other side people who always complain, people who don't, do not believe in this, people who think that contents are being lost, who think that our students <coughs> do not have all the same uh, uh, opportunities. So it's really hard to find a position that says, okay, I'm here rather than middle. But we have to be in the middle trying to find positive things and try to find it. The bad things, the things that could be not very positive. So, the question was if you are happy with the bilingual policies of your local governments, for example, are you happy with your. With no, no. You're not. You're not. I love that. I love that. I love talking about so, politics. So. Sorry, I and mean, that was the other thing about that. Yeah. All, the, all the courses in Primero de Eso, for example, should be bilingual. Uh -huh. I mean, that's impossible, from my point of view. Because that, that I mean, that, very happy about hearing your, your position about uh, diversity. Mm -hmm. but the, the, the students who repeat, to repeat because they are not interested at all in English. Uh -huh. So can, how can you get, get involved like kind of students in your class? Yeah, it's not possible. I agree with you. We're talking about we will see how it's called with diversity. You're from from Andrea. Andrea, yeah, always. Oh, okay. We have a bunch of people from. And I know very well the policies in Andalusia. And one thing is what politicians say, and then another thing is reality at schools. But we are here at schools, so we have to talk to each other, learn from each other, and then try to change things. We cannot wait for them to change things from that level in which they are. They say things. They simply say things. They promise things. But sometimes it is us who have to change these things. When you leave this world and then you go back to school, and then you say, okay, I learned from this guy here, these beautiful things, and we want to try to do that. Or I learned from this guy here how to go with diversity with this type of students. So that's what we have to try to, to, to change. And we were talking about policies. For example, we have different policies. We have 17 autonomous governments in Spain with 17 different bilingual uh, policies. B2 level in Andalusia to be a bilingual teacher. C1 level from some years ago in Madrid or some other communities. 
to the uh, value. So that makes a difference. If you know very well that there is a difference between B2 and C1 level. Now, do we really need a B2 or a C1 level? Or do we need teachers who are able to go with the class and then use his or her English in the classroom? Mm -hmm. You go to a private academy, you pay the money to get a B2 level. And you learn how to be in an airport. And talk about the latest flights to Brussels. When are you going to use that for your students? Or they give you a test. And the test is about benefits of um, traveling around the world. Then you read the test, and you like to be in those places, and that's nice. And then you learn about Moscow and uh, the world uh, football. And that is not what we really need. I mean, maybe what we need is to change these thing, this things. And, and you know, artists in British Council? Artists is like those uh, certificates of uh, uh, Cambridge and Trinity. Now we have artists by the British Council, and they have artists for teachers. So we need, yeah, we need a B2 for teachers, or a C1 for teachers, so that I know very well how to cope with diversity, how to deal with the different uh, problems that I can find, that I can face in my practice. From the basic vocabulary to the most complex sentences, such as commands, questions that I have to ask these kids. But that's in terms of English, which is necessary. But you know very well that with your English, you are able to communicate. Some other people with a higher level cannot communicate. That also happens in Spanish. You have people, maybe Spanish speakers, who have to speak in front of an audience like this, they cannot. And their Spanish is excellent. So what we need to change for those voices is not only the level of English, but the methodology. We are not properly trained on methodology. And we need to request teachers who are working on this, training other teachers to tell them how they do it. We don't want more theory. And maybe I'm going to bring some theory, try to change or to, to make you think about this. But we need not only the, the levels of English, but how to change the method. For example, how many of you have done courses on clinical methodology? But practical courses. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's not even 25%. Is it? So what we need maybe is our level of English is good enough because at the end you're always using the same structures. Same vocabulary, same commands to students, same functions of the language to ask how they feel, to see if they need any help, to try to make them participate. I mean, always the same structures. But we need how to come and use this with our students. This is really tough. Some things that are, let's say, in a high level, if you compare them to teachers of non linguistic subjects, they've been working for years now on how to cope with students who are not willing to learn a language, who failed an unbidden, and they will have to accept how we take exams, and they know how to cope with that. They know how to make students speak or write, and they have some structures, and they give them some advice about which connectors could be good in a written text, or which things they could be using like fillers or things that they can use to make them feel that they can communicate in a foreign language. So maybe what we have to do is to work together, something that we do not do many times. And we do not share experiences, and we should do that. Courses in the tech, for example, should be done, should be carried out by teachers. But if your teachers will have experiences, and they will have to, they could, Share this experience with others. Okay, and the question is this, and there was a kind of an answer now. Do you think that students with learning difficulties should be part of clear lessons? Are they really part of clear lessons? Or not? My friend.
some years older, not many years back. You know how this gets changed. You have students who are, let's say, bad students, and then they change friends. They change their, when they become 14, 15 years old, and they start, well, appreciating their effort at home, or they see that they can get a job, or they want to be friends of whoever, and they start studying. But if we take these kids out of areas, that's also diverse. We're going to leave them behind. The American uh, law of education is taught no child is left behind. And that's a good title for the law. It's no child should be left behind. And sometimes what we do in our schools is to leave them behind. That's our fault? No. We should have the tools, the resources, not to leave these kids behind, to put them in the mainstream. Okay? Which is not easy. That is not easy. Then we find lack of motivation. We find students who do not want to learn. We find that we have to pack these students there till they are 16 years old. And sometimes they are disrupted. And you have to teach the rest of the class. That's right, that's right. I mean, that's why it is, I'm telling you that it is minimal. So, we have to find something that doesn't make a difference, a big difference between these students. But we have to know that if these students do not want to study or do not want to follow the base, they should have options. And maybe the options, the options should be better, and they would be much better. If you train them for any specific vocational training, or you train them to find a job and then simply the level of literacy and um, um, numeracy in Spanish is more than enough. So basic English will be enough. You don't have to be in contents that they cannot reach in Spanish and English, which is even harder. Absolutely. I mean, I understand that. But we have to be careful. I mean, that is good. But that sounds like a private school with families who have the money, private families, summers in England, and they cannot be that. And my son should be there now and all that. So we have to hope that our politicians work there. And if not, you have to try to change things. I mean, we all have to try to change things. But I think it's a very delicate. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's why we're here. In, we are in, La Rioja. Mm -hmm. in primary, it is by equal for all. So all of the students go into the primary program, but in secondary, they have to take an exam. And only if they get like a minimum bar, they can go to the school session. And the reason why we, do, we did this is because what they decided to arrange like this is that there are students who have lots of difficulties to follow the subject in English. So at the end, you have to balance what is better for them if to learn the content or to be in the bilingual group and uh, maybe they are not le learning neither English nor yeah, subject. Yeah. And <coughs> the reason why this happens is because during the primary, if the family has money, the children, apart from the school, yeah. they go to start right, 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 right. So there is a, a gap between students uh, that is getting right, bigger and bigger and bigger along all the yeah. But we have, I mean, we, teach, we have to try to, I mean, we have to teach all of our students. We have to try to make them all come and all the things and succeed at the end of our uh, composite education. It is hard. It is difficult. And success doesn't mean that they're going to go to university. That's a confusing idea that we have in this country. You are good if you go to university. You are really good if you go to upper secondary education to bachillerato. Why? We need vocational training. We need people yeah. to do handouts. We need people to, to use their hands to yeah. work on these things. But the idea is still there. Right. Yeah. Good students will always go to university. And that is wrong. We have many students at universities that. My aim to be bilingual for all. But it is true that unless we have uh, any support, like, uh, I don't know, like, extra curricula program for the students who have more difficulties or another teacher in the class who have a class. It is inclusion difficult in your native class. It is difficult. Imagine in another language that you are not fully competent and the no. students are not. So for us, that's impossible. Yeah. Well, the idea is that they, what we have to know is to, to have the resources, the proper resources. Okay, what I wanted to point out is uh, I come from Castilla and Leon. In Castilla and Leon, where I live, is they can choose, we don't have an admission test, but they can choose the lingual curriculum or, uh, yeah. 
And both are fine because mm -hmm. we don't have uh, to think that something is better. It's better if you want to. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to, that's up to you. So you can start with the green one and then drop it out. That's right. That's, that's good. Problem. You need it all things. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a lot of you can feel it used to be a lot of you, remember? Yeah. Some kids were happy, were lucky, and they went to the wedding room, no. but they were really bad at the school. Yeah. So they have to be changed. So why they need a lot of it, even to change the students yeah. as you want. So well, that's good, an option. Yes, it's finance. an option. Yeah. Uh, it's an option that is flexible. You can join it or you can work it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, it is good because if you want to, to go for it, mm -hmm. go for it. If you want to have a real good education in your mother tongue, you also have the education in tongue. I think we don't have to go, everybody go there, or everybody That's go right. there. So I think if we leave things fluent, it is good because also <laughs> there is uh, uh, the mouth to ear, um, people say, well, I mean, well, it's good. So they go for it. It's no a push up to do, right. to do it. Right. And also, I found out that in my area, it's not the people who have money, the one that are doing the link one, but because as she said, uh, the primary school, they have the bilingual option for everybody. So they choose. That is the thing I think it is important to choose and not to press everybody in only one group. Right. So we have to change politicians, we have to change ideas and topics also. Okay? These are my choice is bilingual, yours is only bilingual. I can't believe that. How we see that yours is only bilingual section. Oh, well. Woo. And then she or he wants to get his own or her uh, daughter or whoever to be like this. I mean, what's the change these things? Speaking clearly with families. That's one of the things there. Well, from the background, I mean, we take a look back at what we have. Not many students with special situations in our grade girls. Now, even though here, all the schools are going to be bilingual. All the schools in all the groups are going to be bilingual. So we will have these students there. The thing is that we need maybe some instructions to tell us how to cope with this um, amount of time that they have to be exposed to English. Or how much of the curriculum has to be given in English. Or things that are going to make these students part of a system that is going to be at the end bilingual. The idea is that all schools will be bilingual. At the end, we will not be speaking about bilingual education at simple education. And this includes English or French as a means of instruction in primary and secondary education. Is that good? And then, yeah, all the schools are going to be They're going to be, yeah, they're going to be. That's the idea. That's the idea. Yeah. yeah. All groups? Yeah, all groups. All groups. For example, I can tell you, ES uh, Alonga in Granada. Where, where, which has gone yet? I've been in, in, a, in a village in Sevilla. In Sevilla. Uh, uh, Okay. Every every group has bilingual education. Okay, every. Because all the groups are bilingual. I mean, so not in my oh, case. Where are you from? From Cali. Cali. And then yours is not oh, now. It is. My center is not available. No. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. now I have another one like yours, which is in Montreal. And that high school has been trying to become a bilingual school, and who doesn't yet has not given them the resources and the human resources, especially for this to happen. So the idea that they have is that all the schools will be bilingual. The other thing is, I see it in a different way. I use my English materials for my ordinary classes. Mm -hmm. uh, you teach? With other students. Which subjects? With the EPD. Okay, okay. And you use this, that's my idea as a bilingual school, but you use English. Yeah, yeah, yeah I try to use English. That's good, that's great. Not bilingual. That's great. I mean, that's great. That's for all for your students, an opportunity that they don't have. That's absolutely good. Well, now, there is not much research in this. I mean, if you try to find papers and all things that university people uh, uh, do, you cannot find much research on this issue of how to cope with diversity. And when you find this, most of it is theory. It's always theory. And we don't want more theory. No, we need something more practical. And then, and the theory, clearly, it's going to be for everyone, regardless of their skills or abilities. That's the proposal. And then, all the names of the laws that we I've had for these years Dyslexia, and then uh, Loe, but we have Lofe, and then Loe, and then Lomfe, and Lola, and uh, all, <laughs> those, all the laws that we will have today. Lelo, Lila. <laughs> we don't know which is going to be next, but we will have one coming soon, as soon as we have a new government or whatever, but the first thing we're going to change is Lom. Okay? Or we'll go back to Lom. Yeah. This makes people crazy. But you? No, not you. 
you will be stuck with standards and these and polish and criteria and link with the indicators and that makes anyone crazy. But especially those who go through the opposite yards. Those are absolutely crazy. If you fail this year, next year you will have a new commander, you will find a new curriculum, you will find new laws and degrees and so that makes people a bit crazy like that. The only thing is that we will keep on working. It doesn't matter who is in the government, it doesn't matter the law we have. We're going to be in the same class with the same students, with the same resources, and to make more, more or less the same. So we will have to see that it doesn't matter if they change this, we will be doing more or less the same. And these two things, I will not read that. It'll, it's only for you to see that this definition of Clio, given by, by Marx in 1994, he mentioned, I mean, this is like for very clever students. I mean, this is for students who or are very clever and they have a good level at school, or are living in a bilingual country or a bilingual region. Clearly refers to situations where subjects or parts are taught through a foreign language with dual focus aims, namely the learning of content, and the simultaneous learning of a foreign language, of course. And now with the students who fail, with the students who don't want to come to school, with the students who don't feel motivated, who don't think that they have to do and learn biology for what? And in English for the best. So <coughs> this guy, this guy in, back in 1994, was very optimistic. And then in 2000, he added something here. And all the subjects and developing in the youngsters a positive can do. Uh, that gives another option. Can do means that we're going to make these students that maybe they can use this easy, basic English that they will learn, or French in real situations. We have here two components. One, the teacher of English, basic. We, the teachers of English, have to change our minds. Number two, the teachers of the non-linguistic subjects. You have to know very well, and that is a really hard task. Which is your main concern? We will see it. Contents or language? <coughs> and how do you make a difference between one and the other when you have to evaluate, for example? Now, with Lovre, I think it's article 10, where you see the cross curricular contents, it is stated there that all the teachers, doesn't matter the subjects we teach, we have to pay attention to communicative skills, especially to the ability to speak and write in a correct way when you mark, when you uh, mark when you give the, the, the marks to your students. And this is very important. Because some teachers have the idea that, no, I'm a non-linguistic uh, teacher, and then I will focus only on contents. How can you focus only on contents? If they are supposed to give you, <coughs> to tell you, to explain this in a foreign language and they cannot. So we have to see how to do these things. And this can do, made and opened some new possibilities. <laughs> well, some misunderstandings. I'm going to pass this so that I can go there with you, and I don't have to be coming here. So. Here we go. So, content. Is content defined name or not? Please. Yes. Sir. Yes, yes. You're a physical education teacher. You, your teacher students have to know this, 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 and that. Okay? That's the final name. Is English the final name here? No. Good. Now, if they go to do an oral presentation and they cannot produce, how are you going to evaluate? What they say. I mean, if I have to say the things that I know in French, it's really hard. It's really I know things, and then it's hard. I mean, we have to find how to make these things possible. For that, the help of the teachers of English is essential. These teachers of English for French have been coping with this situation for years, and they know which structures, which functions they have to use to express what they like, what they don't like, what they feel, what they um, consider. But they think of whatever. If they uh, understand or they cannot understand what you said, I mean, these are the things that we have to work together. And this is English, how to be part of these things. You teach this English. Who were you? Who were you? Okay, so that I can go with you. You teach English. Oh, that's right. Who, who were teaching English? Okay. Good. Number two. <laughs> Bilingualism is not learning a list of words in English. And I, I can tell you my own experience. I have three songs. The younger is 10 years old. Last year he had a teacher and everything was English, he was absolutely happy. They learned a lot, they learned everything. It was nice, really nice. 
My son has a good little fingers, that was good. Now he has another teacher, he can see one of them. And this teacher teaches the whole thing in Spanish. And at the end, she gives them the list of words in English. <coughs> That's a new list. So, now, think that we cannot say that this doesn't work because of one, or two, or three, or one hundred teachers. This works, but in every job, this things happen. But we find people who cannot understand what they have to do. And this is not what it is in the video there is. We find these words, which is attrition. You know the meaning of attrition? Attrition means erosion. Attrition is when you do not practice something, and you forget things. Attrition is when you leave your students in you, in this level of whatever, biology, and then you become September, October, and you're here. Why? Because they forgot things. So the same. It's a, it's a term that is used not only for education, but also for your teeth, for example. Okay? Attrition or marketing or in other terms. Well, Diversity, inclusion, differentiation. Is it only for disabled students? No way. We were thinking of students who have to retake the course. Students who have to do an extra year. So these are students for diversity. And the thing is that, should we call this bilingualism or clear? Which is the proper term for this? My friend, please. Which is your family term? Bilingualism or clear? No. I think clear. Clear. Do you think we should have schools bilingual school or clear school? Clear, bilingual school. Bilingual school. So you prefer clear, but then you like bilingual school. Okay, why? Because it sounds good. Say, this is bilingual school. But think what a bilingual person is. Do you know any bilingual person? Bilingual things that you can say, I think you think, in both languages. Three languages, though. But what we're going to do is to use a new method, well, new, this was the content-based method some years ago, to make our students learn what they used to learn in Spanish. So maybe we have to talk to families and make families think that a bilingual school doesn't mean that they're going to be bilingual when they leave school. Okay? If we talk to families, what do we do when we have students with special needs? We need to talk to families because they can get absolutely scared. My son has these problems, has this disabilities, has these special issues that makes him or her difficult to process of learning. So, is he going to be in a bilingual section? Why not? I mean, we can tell them that he is going to do something that we will see, or at least some sort of this we will see right now. Well, clearly, it's only, we, we talk about that. The solution is teachers with a C-Full level. Are you happy with that? Do you think we need teachers with a C2 level? No. No. It's going to help. It's going to help, of course. But we need teachers trained on the methodology and teachers who really know how to introduce biology, economics, or physical education in uh, foreign language. So it is not a matter of using that. Or textbooks. For example, do you use textbooks in English? Yes? Okay. Do you follow the textbook? No? Yeah? Yeah, but no? Yeah, no? <laughs> so, so. Okay. What do we do with the textbook? Do we follow the, the, the textbook? How do we see the difference between the level of English of our students in, for example, the 30 year old second level education in English and the English years in those textbooks? It's huge. The English that they use in a physical education textbook or in an economics textbook is that this. And then you see the teacher of English they are working on he who has to go, who is the relative, you know, they have to use after one, and then in the other, they have all the conditionals, they have all the passive structures and everything. If you take a look at the primary book in Spanish and in English, I'm sorry, in the bilingual study and in the science of English, you will see a bigger difference. So, again, a textbook could be a tool, but not, it's not the, the, the best tool ever. I mean, it's you. Then we have a problem, we have no fear, etc. If we need to make copies, because we're not going to use the textbook, we have a mind. I don't know how many copies you can do in your high school. You can do all the photocopies if you want. You don't use, you don't use, uh, what about you? Can you do all the photocopies you want? No, no, I, I use the book. You use the book? Yeah. Are you happy with the book? Yeah. 
I think it is very useful. Yeah, it is very useful. But maybe sometimes we have to act. That's what we have all of them. Okay? That's a thing to consider depending on where you teach. And this is something a bit sad. Okay? See of diversity in terms of what we have in our daily life. This is from the big reports of Ridith, uh, in which diversity is considered as linguistic diversity in Europe, not diversity as the inclusion of students with these possible different situations, different learning situations that we can face. So they name these terms nine times, for example, inclusion. But when they use inclusion, they mean the inclusion of languages in the curriculum, not the inclusion of students. And that's in European terms, European documents. Or when they use diversity, nine times again, but they talk about the linguistic diversity in Europe. They do not mention differentiation at all. They do not use that word. And underachievers, gifted, stronger, weaker, or more or less advanced, do not be here. They do not say a word about that. So diversity is only the diversity of cultures, which is nice, or the diversity of languages. But that's it. That's it. Nothing else. We, what we have to do with students with a Down syndrome, or students with a motor problem, or students who uh, simply need an extra push in our lessons is not even mentioned in a big report like that. And that is not good. That is not very inclusive. Okay? And we have to know those things also. Okay, this is a bit crazy. I'm not going to read that. So if we need to know that. For example, in Madrid, do we have anyone from Madrid? Yes. Okay, which um, level is needed to come to a bilingual school? They have to pass the yeah. spec, B1 level. Yeah. Okay. And if they don't have a B1 level, they cannot come to secondary yeah. bilingual school. Oh. What do you think about that? What? <laughs> you didn't know that? No. But I'm surprised. Yeah. Because uh, I, I found out uh, to my children that they, they can achieve a lot in the moment they are included in these kind of programs. Because after one year of bilingual, the what I see is that they learn a lot. Even if they don't have the level at the beginning, they can do it yet. <laughs> it's, it is, I think, there is not a message. I mean, when you are 10 years old, 11 years old, 12, and you have to go through a B1 level, yeah. and then you don't come to the bilingual schools because you don't have that level at that age, <laughs> what if I didn't have the foundation, or I didn't have the, the proper learning, or I didn't have the, 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 the chances to practice English, maybe only and I failed speaking. Okay. That is not very, we're not done to these situations. It is a B1 level for the first and second years. It is a C1 level, it's a, I'm sorry, it's a B2 level, B2 level for the first year of compulsory education. Which is a lot. It's a very high level. Especially, you take into account that in Castilla León, with a B2, you can be a teacher. I know, we're not here. Yeah. <laughs> so it is a kind of contradiction. <laughs> so in mean, times mean, like this, what do we do with students with special needs? Do they come to bilingual schools? And all these students go there. Uh, all these students can go there on the option, but uh, normally these groups are considered to be some kind of ghetto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we see we see good things from one community, all things from one community is also good, or to be changed, considered, but we put them all together and try to find one thing in common. And say, okay, this works here. Let's hope it is here. It doesn't work here. But it isn't fair. We will leave the students behind this. Maybe it should be, because we are dealing with many students in that group. And now, that group, my question is, is that a good group or not very really good group? This one? Yeah. It's really bad, normally. Is that a public school? Yes. I don't like that. I'm sorry, but I don't like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. My center in the first year of secondary school began to choose being bilingual or not, but they are not, uh, we have decided not to change them of, of uh, the class. I mean, 
they had the very interesting plan that before we had these A groups that was the lingua, that were like the clever ones, a B group, but we, we they see the issue. It didn't work. So they are mixed in the mm -hmm. say, this is your A group and you can be bilingual or not. And even if they have range, you can start bilingual, if you don't go okay, you can change the money and then you come back. Mm -hmm. You can come back this year or the other year if you are. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's that's, 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 that's better. Okay. You still give you options. You have those things. You're going to say, okay, now you are not in the language section. And you're going to be in the group. Wait, there. Those with the Galaxian, those who get the lower scores, with those things that. That is not very good. The most right? important issue is not to make this distinction. I mean, the, the same group, you have the lingua, not the lingua, because uh, not at the end, it goes in the, the B group. Like you said, you know, the bad the attitude, the, the, the low level, and this way, even the, uh, the, the students of the B group, they don't feel like being a uh, team. Yeah, there was, there was one thing that I passed from here that I didn't want to uh, have here. This quotation taken from a conversation with the teacher if some of my students were taken to a different group, I would work with an OGD group, of course. That is not the teachers. I mean, teachers have to face reality, and, and that's reality. We cannot, my idea, put all these students apart. Maybe we have to have groups with special attention, and those students cannot study in the area. I do that. But make bridges. Give them the opportunity of going back to the other system if they come to the level, for example. Okay? Well, what else do we have? That's in some of the uh, autonomous communities. But see what Murcia does with the attention to diversity. They say that. Are you, any of you from Murcia? Good. Teachers involved in bilingual teaching must establish the methodological and evaluation strategies to cope with diversity in the bilingual classroom. My question now for all here, all of you, this is of uh, bilingual subjects. Do you have in your skill work? Do you have a methodology described and there you say how you work with these students in the bilingual session? Do you have there said, well, with, with these students, I vote this percentage of time and I do these tasks to them and I give them the opportunity of uh, practicing this and I let them use the uh, mother tongue or do you have this or not? Because I try to find in Granada for research that we were doing. In 12 different schools, I asked the teachers, they were former students of mine from the Oposiciones, and they told me that they didn't have this. They have the traditional methodology, but they don't have this special thing in place. Maybe this is one of the things that we have to change. Okay? And we have to, to reflect on what we're doing and not following some things that maybe are not the, the best thing. So here, they are supposed to do this and see. See here. They say that. So that is in an article of that no. If this student, this student well, fails natural science, the teaching staff may recommend that a child doesn't start this subject through English the following academic year. And nothing happens. They give the teachers the option. And nothing happens. So this student has failed the subject. He will not spend this in English, which is going to make things even harder for him. But now he's going to learn this subject, he's going to work this subject in the mother tongue. This is going to be easy for him. And that is in the norms. And that is good that we have the options there to well, give opportunities to these kids. As you said at the beginning, I mean, if we have students who do not reach the level, if this is not going to be in English, what do we have? Students will have more problems. Students who do not want to learn, who want to learn even less in, in a foreign language. But let's see the options that they give. And the options they give for. And see, what do you do? This is primary. Who is this? It's secondary right now. But these are the options that they give. This is the recommendation that the government does to primary teachers. And you have to tell me if you work on tasks and projects. Do you? Yes. Who doesn't work with tasks and projects? Or do you? No, one. More, more than one, I'm sure. You all work with tasks and projects. No. I'm sorry? Okay, from time to time. 
Yeah. Sometimes you include a task or a project, but sometimes we don't know the difference between one and the other. And what we do is that we make students work together. That is a task. Okay? What was that? The second option is to work with a cooperative and flexible program. We do that. We know, we know I mean, that we, we, we have to do that when they start working in groups, and they will you will arrange the groups most of the time, and uh, they're going to have each other and all the roles that they have to play. That's a good uh, recommendation. Number three, oral presentations. Oral presentation, is that a need? Do we really need that? Do we have to do oral presentations in arts? This is art. This is art. But it's, I mean, can you see the level of achievement of these objectives because of oral presentations? No? Yes. No? Yes? Yes? No? It depends on the group, it depends on the level, it depends on the topic, maybe. That's right, on the topic. But it's not something that we have to um, focus our attention on. They have to produce it. They have to uh, do oral presentations in English. They have some other subjects, and they have the opportunities to do these things in other subjects, maybe. And maybe only twice, three times along the school year, my students in arts are going to do an oral presentation. And that's it. I want them to practice, to draw, to recognize images, to do the things they have to do in my subjects. They're going to learn all these things in English, in both Spanish and English, and how to do that. And I cannot get absolutely concerned with the idea of oral production in all the subjects. That's something we have to change. So, that's maybe good for some subjects. This is the English, all of our subjects. That's it. Those of you who teach English have to be mainly focused on the oral presentations. Now your students have a higher level. Why? Because they listen to all these people using their English. So your students now used to be like this, now they are. They have a higher level. They are the whole day listening, getting inputs for English. Physical education, economics, uh, maths, some of the subjects, all the things will be in English. You have to teach them, you teach them in English, how to solve the problem, how to understand, sorry, the problem. And then they will solve the problem in mathematics. But you have to teach them how to understand a text, a short text, in English or in the subjects that you use to, to work with the contents, and they will be working these things in other subjects. Okay? You have to, this is very simple. If you talk to primary teachers, primary teachers, not primary students, they know the numbers, all of them. And then when I train them to play opposite parents, I ask them, how do you say one and a thing? And they look at me like saying, a big four time. And how do you say 99? How do you write? How do you spell? I mean, these things, they know all these things very well. But how do you say 994 or 993 or something? I can tell you. That many, many, not some, many of them do not know how to say that. La ley para la nueve es tres. Do we have a fast path here? I mean, these are the things that you teachers of English have to, you have to help the other teachers with their things. You have to work together with them and make things easier. So, all the presentations for you, this is English, maybe. And the rest can live peacefully, happily. But your students do not have to do a perfect oral presentation on arts, maybe, or on this. Maybe they will do one presentation, why not? Two, three presentations, why not? Along the school year. But it's not your main focus. You're not teachers of oral production. Okay? And reading in non linguistic subjects. I have done a research now for the British Council. We published book a couple of weeks ago. And students in the non linguistic subjects in the whole country, say that the activity that they do the most is reading in the foreign language. And you can say, oh, well, they should be speaking. Why? They can read. They get into it. They see spelling. They see sentences, the structures. They see. So people read them. We need to read. We, in this country, we need people read them. So if you don't read, then it's not good. Why not? So keep reading in the foreign language. <coughs> keep listening to this. Now here saying how you have to uh, control, how you have to time the time, how you have to see the aerobics or how different types of rhythm when you get tired, exhausted, shattered. What is the meaning of shattered? More than exhausted. How do you spell shattered? The English teacher. The English teacher. You have to be happy. If they can, after running for a while, and you ask them, how are you? Are you shattered? 
Or are you tired with it? I'm exhausted, I'm shattered. And then we see these words with your teeth. Now, extra and complementary activities, that sounds very well. But these are the options that they give for uh, secondary education. Four options, no, five options, sorry, that they give. And the first one is ICTs. Now, how many ICTs do you use with your students? Which apps do you use with your students? Do you use mobile phones with them? Do you use a mobile phone as a teacher resource with the students with a disability? Or do you use a, a tablet okay, with students with a disability? Or with students who need to do a different thing while the rest of the group is doing another thing? Are you using this? Do you have a nice bunch of apps to use or websites to use? If not, you have to find one. You have to find this. This is your option. I see it sounds very well. You ask people, and I see this is that. The PowerPoint. How do you say canyon? Canyon. Sometimes. Okay? So. Sorry? Okay. And some people still remember this of the overhead projector. You remember the overhead projector? El retro proyecto? Things that were always upside down. Well, portfolio. How many of you use the portfolio? And for what? What is the portfolio? Those are the recommendations of the government. What is the portfolio, my friend? If you know, you tell me. If not, you ask it. Uh, I think it's a document where you show me your work or the students can show their work. That's right, that's good. That's a portfolio, the European portfolio of things, and that's so beautiful. The portfolio is what these infant students, infant pupils, have been doing for years. If you are parents, you will see that when the term is over, your kids, when they were three, four, or five, come home with a thing like this, full of documents that they've been drawing, trying to write, whatever, that's a portfolio. That's a portfolio. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the camp, then find the little ghost where he sees his picture, he leaves the work there, comes get another uh, paper, and then he starts working again. And then he creates his own portfolio. Mm -hmm. What is the portfolio? Is that an evaluation tool? No. The other the government recommends that as an as a evaluation tool. It is not an evaluation tool. It is, as you said, a tool that I use to tell my, my teachers how I feel, where I am, the improvements that I'm doing. So that's really good. The portfolio is for him to tell me where it is, but not for evaluation. Because if he tells me he's not doing very well and I fail him, next time he will say he's doing great. So it doesn't, it doesn't work as a, an evaluation tool. Groupings, it's good. Oral expressions and communicative tasks. Well, more or less the same. Groupings sound always very, very, very um, nice, but making groups and making these groups work is not always an easy task. Well, two, two basic things. There are some authors who think that clear is extremely positive effect or has an extremely positive effect on affective factors. Good, that's good, that's nice, that's good. But we have that less positively on pupils' content and learning and general school performance. So some other authors say what he said at the end. We are concerned that the level of content is going down. Who of you, who of you think that the level of content in those subjects have gone down or a bit down? Please. One, two, two, three. Good. The rest. Who of you think that the level of content is the same? It doesn't matter if it's in Spanish or English. Okay, and the rest? I, I don't think that is the level who has changed, but the learning, the real learning that is mm. the Well, when we say the level, we mean the, the, the acquiring of these content. I mean, all these content is going to be there. I, well, just because I have my nephew and my niece following my English program, I can see that they are, they have many difficulties learning natural science and social science. And I can see that they are not truly learning what they are. I mean, they learn vocabulary, they have improved their English, they can understand quite a lot for their age. But the, the real topic they are learning, sometimes they tell me, uh, um, can you explain me? Because I don't know what is this whole topic about. I, I can't understand, I can't follow my teacher. So I, I can see this in primary. And one thing I am really concerned is that 
at the end of the primary, they, in, in Arioca, as well as in Madrid, they have decided that the students will have to, uh, to take the Trinity exam to see their level of English, but they, they, they are not tested for the learning of natural science or social science. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the only thing that matters here is how much English they yeah, learn. Yeah, that's wrong. I'm that's again, that's wrong. about how much natural science are, are they learning. That should be the concern of teachers here. But your concern, as I told you before, is not that your students do perfect oral presentations. You have to forget that idea. Your students are going to listen to you, <coughs> give them instructions, explaining things, making them feel good, making them feel confident to use and understand whatever in yeah. English. See that? Mm -hmm. Then it will be using this, not. Do you are you really, I mean, are teachers really concerned in the first year of compulsory secondary education on the oral production in Spanish of students? Speaking in public? No. Not really. So we, don't, we, don't, we cannot say a concern of something that is not a big thing for us. We have to leave this clear stage. Bilingual education is bilingual. It's two languages. So we have to make our students learn these things in both Spanish and English. And you will see, depending on the group and where you teach, how you have to balance this. And also, as you said, depending on the teacher. Absolutely. But there is no regulation to see if all the teachers are teaching the same. I mean, there is no, I, I don't know if I, I mean, if all the teachers, because the problem I see with primary is that the teacher who is teaching all the subject is an English teacher. And at the end, if you are an English teacher, what you love is English. In secondary, I mean, I well, can teach English, but the only thing I love is biology, because mm -hmm. I am a biologist. So, maybe, if I have to choose, I teach a bit more of biology than in English. I mean, I teach mm -hmm. more English. Like, I'm not teaching English, I teach more English. But in primary, mm -hmm. if a teacher has to study a degree only to become an English teacher, I don't know where. It's but for example, in Andalusia, in Andalusia, this is very good. Primary, this is very good. You cannot teach bilingual subjects. Mm -hmm. Cannot teach. So it's different. Okay. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, they cannot come to the, to the bolsas. If you are a teacher of English and you have a C2 level, you can have something very well. But when you pass your postcards, <coughs> that makes sense, and you get a position as a civil servant, as a teacher for the rest of your life, as a teacher of English, then you tell me, okay, now you can teach science and uh, you can teach uh, arts and so on. That's nonsense. They need people and they, they use people. But to access, to have access to this, you cannot, if you have, it doesn't matter if you have a C2 level. And the method and all the things that you learn when you become a teacher. Mm -hmm. It is we have to be teachers of arts or physical education or specialists in uh, interpretation or mm -hmm. uh, well, it depends on the the also what they do. Well, see, see this. This is you. This is you. Okay. Eighty percent. You must be teachers. Okay. You love this. You can hear because you like this thing. Eighty percent of the studies indicate that intervening special needs into mainstream schools doesn't have a negative influence on other people's school performance or social development. So having these students with us is great and level will not go down if we are students with business. But only 5% of class teachers, subject teachers, special needs teachers and principals supported inclusion to some extent. How can we see that? 80% think that it doesn't have a negative effect. But only 5%, only 5% support inclusion to some extent. Why do you think this happens? Why do you think this can happen? I mean, it is that. I agree with this, but I don't do this. It's like, uh, I don't know, uh, recycling. If I ask you, all of us love recycling, all of us see that recycling is great. But then, sometimes, we forget about that, okay? And so, why do you think this could happen? The reason is that there is a fear of not being able to provide quality teaching for both pupils with and without special needs. So maybe, again, there we have the need of training, of proper training, to tell people who want to do things, they can do things with the students, and they can put together these uh, students with and without special aids to get in the class and work specially in bilingual sections. Okay? Well, 
We have, and this is, this is theory, and I hate theory. I like bringing offers. Sometimes we have to. And these guys are like a, a lot of big guys in terms of and many languages and the yeah, acquisition of languages and so on. And you know all of this, you know Garner about the multiple intelligences, and he says that students are different in terms of intelligence and talent. So teaching should be adapted to best match each student's needs. Or we have Vygotsky with this zone of proximal development. What is that? Have you heard of these theories before? Yes. Did you really understand what this was before? Were you really interested in this? To be? To be? The first. The first is good. It's great. We're going to see how this really works in our lessons and how this could be. If we work, for example, this zone of proximal development, uh, we will see a video right now. But let's see this again. I mean, this we know all this. Okay? And now you are going to be there. Now we think of theory here. Think of you. Okay? You are teachers, and there you are now at the bottom, and we want to be at the top. Okay? How? Let's see, I'm going to pass you the presentation. You don't have to take pictures if you want. Okay, you will have a presentation later. So, remembering. Remembering. That's very traditional. Okay? Remembering. Let's see if you apply these verbs in your lessons. Okay? For example, do you say define? Yes. Duplicate? List, make a list. Oh. Memorize, recall, repeat. Reproduce. Yes, yeah, sometimes we do. Is it that? No, it's not. It's not. We have to make our students remember things. Okay? How? Well, using these instructions. So this should be some of the verbs that you have to use. But more than remembering, we need them to understand. If not, we will have students less motivated. If they know what they're doing this for, they will be a bit more motivated because they understand that this is useful. And they can explain these things when they come home, for example. Okay, what do you do today? This. And what is that? I don't know. But I know the list of things that I have to say. Okay? I know the parts of the flower, but I don't know how this works. So we have to make our students, and this is essential, to understand which verbs should we use to this. Classify, or describe, discuss, explain. See that you're giving emotions now. Okay? Explain in your own words. Or identify, locate, recognize, report, select, translate, paraphrase. Say these in other words. So you understand things. When you understand something, you can give different emotions. If you only know things by heart, you only have one option. But if you understand them, you can give them options. So you have to use these terms in, in order to make them see that they can retell things, okay? And this is something to practice. Applying. You learn something, you understand something, you apply that. Let me see if you use any of these. If you give them your students options of shoes, for example. My students of physical education, I'm going to talk to them about what is best. Having a banana or an apple in the morning. And it depends on what? It depends on the type of exercise that we're going to do. Okay? So we work on that. Calories and all the benefits of having a banana or an apple in the morning. Or if you want to follow that, a banana or an apple in the afternoon or in the evening. And if this has an influence on the sugar in your blood, or maybe the efforts you're going to do. Okay? They will have to explain the rest after that. And we will see how. And we will see this right now. Do you use these things, for example, with your students, my friend? In physical education, do they explain things or do you try to make them understand some of these things? Or is it only physical education as such? Yeah, I try. No, I use it. You use that. That's good. That's great. So, choose, demonstrate, dramatize, employ, illustrate, interpret, operate, schedule, sketch, solve, use, write. Now we have his students going to the door, the supermarket, and with a phone, they're going to interview people and see what they bought, the age that they have, and they will say if they can or they cannot. They should or should not have this for, for example, salad. 
If this is good, if not, if this is healthy, if it's not, if they know what they want, maybe that's good. And this is still the special needs is recording. He is recording. But he is in the group. Okay? He will be there. Don't forget all that. Okay? Maybe he's not there because he cannot move. But he will be reordering all the videos and making the final video. And he's going to be in charge of that. Okay? Or maybe he's in hospital for three months. Then he can do this from hospital. Because he can work with a computer that teaches at hospitals. So maybe we can do these things even with someone who is not attending our lessons. And then we have, the next one is analyzing, which is applied with verbs such as compare, contrast, criticize, differentiate, discriminate, distinguish, and so on. If we evaluate, we have criteria. When we evaluate, we say good and bad things, pros and cons. We give our opinions. So maybe we have to give our students things to learn, things to understand, things to discuss. And now things to evaluate and say if they liked or if they didn't like. You have to evaluate your own teaching process. Did you really do that? Did you do that? That's mandatory. That's mandatory. And if you do that if in a proper way, that makes you reflect. It makes you start again and change things. So that's what we have to do with these kids here. Simply tell your students to argue, okay? You're going to talk about Immigrants, positive or negative for society, is a cross political topic. And they will have to defend. It doesn't matter that all of us are going to defend people coming from other countries and this uh, things, but we're going to make one of the groups be against it, so that the other group has to give their opinions. What do we do with the skill with the special needs? Be part of this. How? Huh. It's going to be working on the science, for example. Or he's going to be, or she's going to be doing some specific things that we gave him as a goal, as a member of this group. And finally, we have this of creating, which is the last step there. Assemble, construct, create, design, develop. You told me, you, you told me that you work with tasks and projects. If you do work with tasks with your students, those are very common verbs for you. You have to design this with this instruction that I'm giving you. I give you two things, instructions and time. I devote some time every lesson for you to work on the task. I cannot let these things be done at, uh, at home. So, design, develop, formulate, or write. And now, see this guy here. This guy is, I don't know, uh, five years old. <coughs> and we're going to listen to, you see that he has what your students may have. And now it's very popular, this of the um, attention deficit disorder. It's very popular. And uh, we have many now in our lessons, our classes, in secondary education. But let's see how this thing that happens with these students, with this uh, guy at home, it is his mother who is talking to him. You have to listen to his mother who almost comes to be desperate. I mean, she, she, I think that she was close to saying, okay, stop, I, I, I cannot keep on going with it. But see how, giving the proper instructions, things are going to happen, and how things start happening, okay? And this is, in theoretical terms, this of uh, the soul of proximal development. Thank you. 
Wat weg? Is dat gekomen? This is here. Well done. I don't know what's going on with the with the sound. Just terrible. another thing that I wanted you to, to consider. Do you differentiate really, not only in tasks and assignments and uh, all these things, but do you differentiate in goals? For example, do you work with uh, adaptations of the curriculum? Do you have adaptations of the curriculum in your classes? Yes? Okay, tell us one. What do you have? But for example, what I teach you at technology, English, mm -hmm. I have but this year I have two students that they don't speak English at all because of different necessities. So I needed to change the uh, curriculum and prepare some exercises in Spanish. Okay. So the other things that they have, I mean, they have the age that they cannot use English, but they can follow the... the, the uh, they, they could follow the content, yeah. Okay. That is not really a significant adaptation of the curriculum. It is simply that you have students well, who maybe they, are, they came from other uh, countries or realities or whatever, and they cannot follow these languages in maybe a couple of years. They will be attending this mm -hmm. kind of language. But I mean, students who have these special things in your lessons, do you have any? No? Uh, uh, she is student who have, have this. Uh, it's a bit of an adaptation. Uh, um, a part of uh, having more time for them for the, for the, for the exams and the, 
be a, a little bit separate from the others so they could concentrate more. Mm -hmm. So in the, the questions, we are writing a different form, stressing the words, and then we make them repeat for the questions before okay. we start to make some. So you have a different strategy for them. You pull them apart, there's not three rollers and... No, no, in the exam, for the side, also for the side. Okay. Okay. Are you doing exams, written exams or oral exams? Uh, well, I, I'm not very fond of exams, so they are, they are like... <coughs> I was forced to have exams, okay. there, but, they are, but they have a lot of uh, oral presentations and, and, and work and tasks, and mm -hmm. they have to complete that. Okay, and what about uh, exams? Do you have different exams for the different students you have? Because at the end, most of you have exams. You have different exams. How many different exams do you have? Three. And why? Three. Three. And? One for people who speak better English. Uh -huh. One for people who doesn't speak English at all. And uh, something in between. Okay. And there is a level of difficulty too in the, the subject. So because I'm sure that this student with a higher level in English we have a higher level also in content in, in general. And those with a low level, we have maybe a low level of achievement of these objectives for basically. Okay, yeah, that really happens. And uh, for those who have, who have, or you are using for exams, how do students react to that? Are they happy? Because I think that would be a problem, or maybe a part of families. Yeah, yeah. families, families. Families are making a problem. Yes. Do they see the same class? And then they take a different exam? Yeah. Yeah, have, I know teachers who have five different exams. Yes. Five different exams. Yes, because even with that, it's hard for them. Even with uh, an easier exam, it's really hard for them. So I guess that the, the more English they have, the, most, the more difficult the exam is. Right. There is like a regular exam with a lot of English and the regular content. Um, for those special students who doesn't, which that level is too much, mm -hmm. we have like three students with another. And what do you do at the end? Because if I am, let's see, I mean, this group here is the mainstream group. I am the group of the lower level, and this lady here is the higher level. And at the end, we all get uh, half of the answers uh, possible. We get a five out of ten in our level. What do you do to give them the final marks to the families, for example? Yeah. That's That's the on the progression on on the progression on each student. Okay, okay. That's because the good answer is that evaluation is not only an exam. It is all the progress that you do. But at the end, so to be, and he is, I mean, I think he, he is, uh, he's right when he says that, the families could say, or any students could say, okay, I've been working hard, I've been doing a lot, I've been, and then my, my mark here now is going to be uh, more difficult to achieve than <coughs> others because of my effort. So it is hard, but it's difficult to, uh, to know. This, at the beginning with LOXE, those of you who started working some years ago, with LOXE, there were differences in, in the same level. I mean, you could drop students <coughs> and give them different marks with reinforcements and all these things. But that didn't um, work, and I will tell you why. I was a teacher then, at that time, and it didn't work because of families. Families saw that they were going to have a label. Yeah. Saying, this is the group of those with the lower level, my son, my daughter is there, I don't want her to be there, and I'm going to change that. So, something that could be good. If you go to England, for example, I don't know if you go to England, in a school, in a secondary or primary school, in the same group, you have three levels. I mean, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Those students need more effort, more push, more attention inside of the teacher. And then those students who are well, the mainstream level, and then those who have a high level, and they need all the things. Because sometimes, what we do, what we say, what we do with these students is to make them help others. And if you have a good student, for him to just hit, he's going to have others. And at the end, sometimes these students get tired of these things. And sometimes these students do not have the social skills to help others. And then, at the end, others will make fun of him or her because she already gets very good levels or very good marks. 
So this is something to uh, consider, not to uh, um, keep on doing the same. What we have, we come to this diversity, the mixability that we say here, the different levels, cultural diversity, of course, with different people coming from different uh, countries or religions or simply the areas of the city, students with special needs that we uh, know very well, and the latecomers. I don't know if where you live, you have latecomers, do you? Late cameras, these students already appear in March or April because of the, the olive picking season. The olive picking or the asylum is strawberry in Huelva. Then you have students who come in the families, and then these are also students that need these uh, special things. And here, these are the difficulties that you have to uh, challenge the large class size in the time that we need to. to do all the, th the things that we are offering uh, here, for example. The lack of materials that we uh, don't know. The lack of knowledge. For example, you said this of um, well, Asperger. If I, we say Asperger. What do we really need to know about Asperger if we want to work with these students? A lot. And what do we, what do we know? Nothing. Nothing. So that's, that's not. That's terrible. I mean, we have to cope with a situation, but we are not. So we, we learn, and we learn just, yes, well, because of the experience, and because of things that happen in a daily basis with, uh, with uh, families, that sometimes we need to have this specific training on what to do with these students in these specific situations. All the lack of knowledge of the students that we have, all cooperation that we set with other students. And let me show you this, okay? What we see, we do with these students. You told me several times that you work with tasks. And we would say, 1% of the teachers provide extensive visual and oral support during the teacher talk with the other achievers. Do you? With those students with a lower level, do you provide visual things? Yes? Yes, good. Okay, now, think of your class, the group of students you have, and the students that with or students who could have the need of this visual uh, support. And now think of the classroom where you teach. Okay? If you go to other countries, maybe, you will see, and in some schools here, and every time more and more, you will see the walls covered with information. And in some schools here, Still, school I'm sorry? Like primary school Yeah, for example, for example, primary. Why don't we do the same in secondary schools? <coughs> in summer, because of Finland. Finland, everybody loves Finland in terms of education. Go to one of those uh, classes, uh, classes there, and you will see that you cannot see the wall. You cannot see the wall. I mean, you have images, you have information that when they start looking at that, you can see what you want them to keep on recording. Do you know what a lot there is? We talk about ICTs. The Globster is a great tool that you have to keep a summary of the unit that he has finished. And you can recall that information. They can go there and find the information. You can be working on units number three, and they have all the information there on the wall about units one and two. And that keeps growing till the end of the school year. So maybe we have to do this things that we could do a business. Gloucester, it's Gloucester, like block, Gloucester. And now we have that 73% 73 of teachers allow the use of the mother tongue. Do you allow the use of the Spanish? No? Tell me. I don't. You don't? I try not to. I try to go to the No? Okay, that is good. That is good. I want to. It's a deal. You try to try? No? Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 it's not. I think that it's not you now as well. Let's listen to this uh, colleague here now. I will go over you. Tell me, yeah. what happens with your Spanish in Well, Well, uh, I try to promote the, to the need to speak in it, to, to search for words in, in his minds. And if not, okay, but I will answer always in English to maybe still tell me something in Spanish. Okay. Try to do, say it in English. No, I'll phone. Teacher, I can't. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's good. That is really good. I mean, I can't. I can't say what I need in English. So say it in Spanish. And then we'll tell them how to say it in English. Yeah. I know students, especially in primary education, that they beat. Because they couldn't say, can I go to the toilet? Need to the loo, you know the meaning of need to the loo? Mm-hmm. Need to the loo means what? Go to the toilet. Yeah. Teach that to the kids. Mm-hmm. Need to the loo. They go home, they will say that. Need to the loo because their sisters, brothers, or many parents do not know the same, the same the, the meaning of this. So really, that's a very simple thing. You can teach them and they will have the sentence, the structure that they need to go to the toilet. Or, for example, I have got my PA clothes today. Or I've got my trainings, right? I mean, and you give them this stage, this basic language, at the beginning of the school year, and they will know for sure that. If they don't have the English to say that, they can use Spanish. Okay? Now, for example, do you use Spanish when you give instructions of an exercise, my friend? Sometimes. Sometimes. Why? Because they don't really understand what you're saying. Not so right. sometimes you will um, say that in Spanish, and then you talk uh, in English, and then you uh, use it in Spanish. Mm-hmm. Okay, so sometimes we use Spanish. Well, if I do this, if I give the instructions of a game, for example, or activity, in English, and then they know that I'm going to do the same in Spanish, some of them will change, they will wait for me to do this in Spanish. Mm-hmm. So what I should do is to go and see where these students are, how to put them together, or how they group, or in groups, tell the leaders of the group that that's a, a moment to translate it to retail what he said. But try to use Spanish when you have to. And sometimes you have to. I don't want to be in the lesson where I understand nothing. Or almost nothing. You are 14, 15 years old. Your mind is in all things. And now, things that are not really of your interest are English. So I cannot show how good I am preparing a PowerPoint. And I'm really good at that. I love Red Sea, maybe. But I cannot do that because I didn't get to this. Maybe I'm the fastest. I can run a lot, but I cannot do that. Why? Because I didn't get the instruction of going running from here to the goal and then come back. So I have to make sure that they understand how using it. We have to spend. There was a kind of a revolution some years ago, maybe in the 80s, of using only the foreign language. That didn't work. It doesn't work. We need these reinforcers, especially with kids who have a lower level of English. Peer support. Do you do this of peer support? Yeah, peer support is good. When you have this, now we are crazy with the competences, and uh, we have this, this of the entrepreneurship, this uh, telephone, things that they're going to they open their own court in less when we think of entrepreneurship and, and education. But entrepreneurship is that, is that they are in a group, they belong to the group, they are the leader maybe, or they have to know how to follow the instructions given by the leader. That's entrepreneurship. So give each of them the responsibility of working with these kids also to tell them or to tell them what they were said or what they were expected to do. And first of all, groupings that we do, of course, and then with the gifted, discussing with, with them in English. Do you do that with these students, with those with a higher level? Yes, you do. I'm sure you do. Why? Because it's a good tool for the others to listen to you, communicate and using the English in a real context and that's good. Especially if you have native speakers, native, uh, native students, that's uh, even better. Or additional material. And with both expecting individual accomplishment of the similar tasks and presentations. And these are the things that teachers do not do very much. And maybe we should do that with this student's family. Provide additional teaching for gifted pupils. Gifted pupils are not students. I mean, we, we cannot say that gifted pupils is something from another planet. A gifted students, we can have more advanced students, students who maybe do not need a teacher. You give them a computer, they learn more or less the same, because they love reading and, and looking at the meanings and, and stuff the internet and everything. 
that we need to provide these students with something extra that makes them feel that they can reach other objectives. They can do other things. Not only to make them guide those who need uh, an extra portion, an extra help. So this is good. Co-teaching, special needs assistance. Sometimes we don't have the help that we should have. You know, the countries they have maybe more students than we have, but we may have an assistant teachers, well, assistant teacher, and that's really good to have them working with other students. We have big numbers that we don't have. <coughs> different homework for different pupils. Do you do that with your students? Do you send them? Do you give them different homework? No, my friend? No? My group is. Oh, yeah, you told me you have an excellent group. Where, where do you teach? <laughs> yeah, in a rural area, they have only a group of a rural group. In a rural area, they are all they are all a good level. Then yeah, yeah. that's good. That's yeah. good. There is okay. only two groups for the level, and, and maybe out of the bilingual program, there are only six, seven people. Six, seven people. Well, that's good. That's good. And then another answer, please. My friends, yeah. do you have different homework for these students? Sometimes, or sometimes maybe it's the same homework, but if I see there are difficulties, I can adapt it. Okay, homework, what a word. <laughs> homework. Are we allowed to, to give homework to our students? Are we allowed? Yes, we are. LOFE is the only law that allows homework. Okay? Now, if we don't want to use homework, we're going to say something in a more pedagogical way, which is the, to develop the own learning process. <laughs> the learning to learn. <laughs> learning by themselves. That sounds better. So we will not say homework anymore. We will say that, now, for example, this is the flipped classroom. Now everybody loves flipped classroom. What is flipped classroom? Homework. <laughs> It is homework. It is a nice and beautiful way to make your students work at home. It depends on the students you have. And the subjects. This is something not only, of course, for English, it's for all the subjects. Especially for some others better than for English. And tell pupils about the topic of the next clear lesson beforehand. Yes, this what I told you. This is the uh, free classroom. We're going to work on this. We're going to work on means of transport, okay? And it could be good if you take a look at these websites, if you take a look at this, if you watch these videos. That's the question. They work back at home, then they can't, and they tell you what they're doing. You don't have to be a trainer on flipped classroom. You don't have to go to the FEP to teach people about the FEP, the flipped classroom, or to become the expert. We don't want that. We want to use something that could be good and most favorable. Okay, when you go home, you use the computer to do this, this, and that. Visit these websites, and if you do that, that's much better than doing in a notebook or using a, a textbook. So maybe that is part of the success of this uh, of the classroom. But it is it. it is still give them the option of coming here and telling what they know about planets before they can uh, or they start doing that. It is, I mean that really works. It really works to make them feel that they know this. Okay, now comes the time for the checklist. For you to check, you're going to evaluate your um, high school. Okay? <coughs> and this is for you to work individually. And then we will see the results. Okay?
do we provide this visual help that we said before? Or the basic lessons is always adapted to make good progress in the learning. This, I mean, if you, if you take a look at that as a checklist, as part of the checklist, to see if your high school is working properly, now think of the opportunities. Think of the, the skill work you have to prepare. 12 units with eight sessions each, and this, and this, and this, and this, nothing can be changed. But that's real life. Real life is what? Is that we have a textbook, and how many of you finish the test? But it can be changed. Can be changed. Yeah, yeah, can be, can be, of course. That's right. It should be open and flexible, always open and flexible. But we have to know from the beginning of the school year that this is going to be flexible. So that we don't feel bad if we don't come to that point. In fact, norms say that you can adapt what you don't finish and the levels you have depending on where your school is placed. Sometimes we don't know that. Teachers make sure that they provide any learner with appropriate amounts of thinking time. Thinking time. If we ask our students, and put here, and put here, and put here, this guy here is not going to be put here. To see this exercise. So maybe we have to change this. A volunteer for this? He will not be a volunteer. Maybe he wants to do that. He didn't have the answer to think of the answer. And his answer is simply good. But he needs an exercise. Mm -hmm. Or classrooms, classrooms, building, are organized with clearly understood routines in place that these kids understand very well. Mm -hmm. Classroom rules, what to do, they have to close the windows, they have to water the plants. They have to organize this, they have to different impacts or whatever. Everything has to be properly done. Classroom displays support language development and learning at all levels. Bilingual notices are used. Something that is always used. Okay, so you can, if you want, if you want, this is a checklist for you to reflect on what you do at high schools, okay? At your school. And then see if yeah, maybe when you can in September. You can say, okay, maybe for next year we could change this or adapt this. Or maybe, let's say, for example, uh, ATM. Teachers interact in the foreign language with those students that need an extra push. We have to tell our bilingual teachers to come to use these all the things. Let's see, now we have these of the, you know, TPR, Total Physical Response. You know that? You know the method? Mm -hmm. No? Total physical response is, you know the song, head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, that's total physical response. Well, because the students at the end know that this is the head, this is the shoulders, this is the knees, and this is the toes. Because they do the physical response. So, one of the things more recommended for these students is that. Okay, we're going to move now to another, another challenge that we have. This is what we can face. Yeah, I'd like to uh, I'd like to add another more question here. No, of course. Maybe. Do we ever try to explain our students what diversity is, what diversity really is, and why we go with them in different ways? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think we should do that. Then I'm not sure they can understand it. No, I mean, I'm absolutely happy with your proposal. They will understand that. In fact, they are always happy to help other students who need this extra care. And if you tell them that this is going to be for the wellness of the whole group, for the group to keep on being together next year, for the group to not to leave anyone behind, for them to be happy and work peacefully in the classroom, they will be happy to do this. Thing. So, explain this to the students. Of course, the fun is. Sometimes families are more mobile than they But now, let's say, this is what you can find in your lessons. And this is very common. Some of them are very common. You can face what? ADD, you know what ADD is? Get it. ADD or with hyperactivity. Attention deficit disorder or attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. Or blind, low vision. What do we do with a guy who has low vision? See it in the front row, the first row. Give for the focus. Send him anything that's going to be given in a PDF format for him or her to see at home. With the computer. Provide a computer for him or her. It depends on 
the type of uh, impairments, visual impairments, maybe on face cams and helps you with these kids. And we have several patients, therefore, they are hard of hearing, some students, epilepsy. Do you know what to do when they have an epilepsy attack? Yes, because they, they, they inform us. Yeah. For fun. So uh, in the class where there is for this kind of people, we have a... That's good. Many instructions of yeah. what to do. What to, what to, so that, that's really good. You have to know how to proceed with these students. these things and in all the problems that the students have, there is a person that there uh, has a meeting with you mm -hmm. and advises you how to handle all good. these problems. That's good. That's very really good. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to try to do the same with the very common telehealth. Now, okay? So I'm going to give you some ideas of how to go with the relationship with these diseases that are now very or pretty common. For example, the special language disabilities or the speech and language disabilities, you have a case with dyslexia. Do you know how to cope with this? All of you? No. No. And that's what we have to request from our head teachers. To have in the first days of September, the program training on this. One expert coming in a couple of days will be now. Some of the sales from the uh, external orientation department, from the local authorities, from anyone taking care of these things in your community, tell them, okay, the guys we have here have this, this, and these issues, and you have to proceed like this. Try to do this, try to avoid that, try to put him working with others. If he doesn't work with others, doesn't matter, sometimes you cannot work with others. I mean, you have to know these things beforehand. And it is really bad when you have to face these things without the knowledge of what's going on. That's really frustrating for teachers and for kids, of course. Because you're a teacher and you're not providing them with what they expect to What else do we have? Many others, okay? And, okay, from the things we have here, These are the TDAs. I don't know if you can see that properly. Can you see that properly? Yeah? Well, I'll tell you. So, check if your students, if these students with a daily asset, with a attention deficit disorder, how many of these features, characteristics? For example, they interrupt and intrude the teacher and other students most of the time. You have to check if these students blast out answers and opinions. You're asking him, and she answers. You ask her, and she answers. You ask if you have a, a rubber, and she answers. Okay? You say, okay, I'll be book. I have a book. And they are always interrupted without the idea of doing that, but they do. Has difficulty waiting for his turn. We know, we have many. Or, Constantly stands up for no apparent reason, or is very talkative. We have those also. Or might dash around or climb, maybe sometimes uh, they climb on the uh, on the tables and chairs. Fidget successively with hands on feet or feet. Is easily distracted by external stimuli. Is very forgetful. You tell them, okay, now go there and bring this. Then they go and on the other end they say. Why are they here? So they come back. Maybe they don't come back to you. They go back to their seats. And that's it. So we have to find. If we have this stance, this characteristics, we have to know how to cope with this stance with our students, with these students, in particular. For example, doesn't pay attention to details. It's like this of skimming the text or scanning the text. This gets. You cannot ask them what really happens in a conversation, in an exercise, or an activity that you were doing. Maybe you can ask them how many people in the conversation. If these people felt happy or not. And that's it. They are going to be like skinning, what we say. Never scanning for information because they don't have the questions to do it. Doesn't finish on time, they assigned tasks. And then, most of you, tell them to finish those tasks at home. They will not. 
If they cannot do this at home at school with your sport, with all their students, how can they do this at home? If they are by themselves, they don't understand English. Maybe their parents work in a bar or they are far from home and they don't have any support. So maybe that is not the best homework. The development of the learning to learn competence that we mentioned before. Or rarely finishes task and assignments, impossibly calls some answers, has a short term memory, and has a messy desk. These are, let's say, the main characteristics of these students. Very common nowadays in our society. And some of them even tell you, some of them tell them only they this happens to you. Just read the accident, I don't know what. <laughs> Did this happen to you? No? Almost. That one almost. I can tell you this happens. Okay? They say, okay, I'm the date. And I get a couple. And I know families that are going to private psychologists to get a certificate saying that they are the date. Okay? So we have to know what to do with that. And that's what we're going to see now. Okay, here we have a huge bunch of possibilities. When possible, raise phonological awareness by teaching phonemes and things and this good ones. You will have this presentation in a PDF format, so that you can read this at home. For me, the best possible solutions could be this with these students. Remember, you're teaching. You're teaching a subject. You're trying to make them learn. And then in a foreign language. And then these students who don't pay attention, who are always interrupting you, who are always disrupting the, the, the pace of the classroom, so it's going to be hard. So let's see some of the advice given here with this guy. One, give short and clear instructions several times. And this is proof. You tell one of these kids to go to the lab and get a notebook there with her name, and then bring it back to me. They go get lost. They need something they don't need to come to the lab. But you tell them, okay, I'm going. Where are you going? You go to the lab. Okay, where are you going? To the lab. You will not forget that. So to the lab. To get what? My notebook. See my notebook here? I have another one there. So you're going where? Then uh, to the lab. To do what? The notebook. They go and get the notebook. They only need these instructions. Remember the guy we saw before? They need the proper instructions. Because the kids need this special thing. Post checklists for the different tasks. Or write objectives and instructions on the board. As we mentioned before, I mean, we have instructions there that you have in your uh, classrooms. Leaving clearly stated what to do or what comes next. For example, Try desperately not to criticize students. These students cannot stand those things. Yeah? And sometimes we say, the mother and the other baby. Or use the body system. The body system, I have another colleague who is going to be with him or her. And he's going to tell him, or you can eat or you can eat or you can eat So to be really intense to this guy here, and it's going to make things easier for him and for you. Use what? Well, develop a sense of humor, of course. Develop a sense of humor for these students especially. But this next one, used by gestures, is essential. This of the visual learning comes to you. You will be the visual tool for these kids. And we have to provide this with gestures, with mimics. Same things, but something square, something round. Something huge, something is going to be much better for them to learn if you apply these things. Or, for example, alternate physical and mental activities. These students should never have activities that take longer than 20 minutes. It's crazy. 20 minutes, they cannot do an activity for longer than 20 minutes. Or, make frequent visual contact. That's for them to know, you and them. I mean, that's something we do, we teach us a lot. And have students. Repeat instructions or have reworks in school and homework and so on. Well, and we have some others. For example, these of them avoid more than 20 minutes of seat work is one of those that I'm going to highlight 
And of course, this off incorporates more TPR activities. It doesn't matter where you teach. You can be a geology teacher. So you need these activities. Okay? You have girls, but they have to recognize. You have instructions, but they have to recognize. You have different shapes to recognize. And you know what jigsaw is? Who of you know that? Okay, so I'm not going to play the video. You go to tell us. Tell us what jigsaw is. Can you? Of course. Well, I'm not going to, be, to watch the video, so. Okay, um, I guess we're talking about the technique. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. So you split the class in different groups. Okay, I have different groups. Good. And each uh, team is a team of experts in a part of, uh, so for example, if you're, I don't know, you split the contents of a unit in, in different parts. And each okay. team is going to be the expert of one part. Okay. So they are going to investigate about that part of the topic. And then they are going to, so we again split the class, but in uh, heterogeneous uh, group. Mm -hmm. So this way we have one expert of each part That's of right. new group. So Jigsaw means that I'm going to make him an expert, you an expert, you an expert, and you, about this particular topic. And then you will go and spread the news. Okay? You will teach others about this. That's the big story. Can you please hand this out for me? You don't mind? For the rest of the rest of the so much. And now, see, I told you something that I want you to remember. It is that when kids go back home, they have no teachers, they have no help, they have nothing in most cases. And this is something that I do with my students and I recommend you to do with your <coughs> with your students also. And it is what? I, I call this talk. You know the mocks? Mocks massive open online courses. Courses for everyone. So these are the teachers open online courses. This is for my students. For what? I'm going to provide my students with this as a tool. This is one of my student teachers. I'd like to listen to her. And what she is doing there, what she is doing there is to record three minute videos in which she explains things. And that's a moment in the block she has. So that students, when they go home, they have this to remind what happens in the classroom. It's only two minutes for each topic. You're going to provide a tool they don't have. You're going to make a short summary of what happened in your lessons, the most exciting, the most interesting, anything that was good. And they're going to have a tool at home to have you there repeating, recording, doing a short summary or whatever you talked. I'm sorry you cannot hear this problem. Why this in English? Why this is English and it is in Spanish. Because this is for the students with a lower level. We don't need this for students with a very high level. But this is needed for these students. Okay, when I told you that we were going to work with tasks, this is what I expect for you to do. I mean, you propose your tasks. And leave clearly that in these tasks, these students will have to play a role that you have thought previously. For example, here you have a, a proposal of tasks for each of the units of work in a school year. And you have the task number one for unit number one. This is what people always call a task-based approach. Then, along the unit, they will be working, preparing. That's going to be the, the, the task cycles. And at the end of the unit, they will do a presentation. There, your students with the special needs will be there, being part of this presentation. Maybe they do not do that much, but they will be part of the presentation. Maybe what they did was to give colors to the PowerPoint presentation. Or maybe what they did was, I don't know, to prepare the sound to make the sound work, not like this. Or they, I don't know, cut things into pieces and they put together the poster that they're going to do for the presentation. Here you have the tasks very well explained to kids. 
These students of mine also prepare short videos of one minute to explain the task again so that they can never say that they don't know what the task is about, they didn't come that day, they forgot about what, and these things are also in Spanish for families to understand what's going on. And then, what if I was an art teacher? I'm going to be an art teacher. And if I was an art teacher, I have to think that two hours a week is not that much time. So that maybe language assistance cannot be used as we could, as we'd like to. It's going to be hard for us to use a language assistant once a week if we only have two lessons a week. Because we have to keep on working on the contents and so on. Well, I told you before to follow up with families, but of course, we should use, if we taught art, for example, but this is for any of you, bank of images. Bank of images to reinforce what we are learning. Where do I keep this? On the walls. Some of your classrooms seem to come from a hospital. I mean, you take all the chairs out of the room and you bring beds and sick people and family. It looks like a hospital. So try to make these classrooms a visual thing for them to, to learn. For example, I would, I would use, if I was an arts teacher, the technique of the hidden objects for these kids. Maybe the others are working on other things, but I want them to identify objects, maybe cycles, or maybe people, or maybe smiling people in a, in a figure, or they will have to count people in Las Meninas, or I don't know, they will have to, to see, and you will have to be happy with these things. Be happy with these things. Sometimes you cannot do more with these kids. We have to know and be aware that sometimes the adaptation of the curriculum for these kids in the second level of compulsory secondary education is that of the first year of primary, second, uh, primary education. So uh, there's a big difference. And we have to be happy with what they do for that level that they really have. There are some apps like this of the artist's toolkit of Quizlet. I mean, I love that for any subject, for any subject. You have interactive diagrams that you can create your own. I don't know if you use this uh, app, but it's really useful. For example, if I was an art teacher, I'd use what? This interactive websites of the museums. There are many and really good ones. And maybe they are not all for the Museo del Prado. You can go and visit others from Australia, New Zealand, or any other countries. Maybe they have these beautiful websites. Accuracy in auto production is not the key thing here. And I told you before, Relayed images is much more important. Group images is much more important. Or identify objects is much more important. In other subjects, they will have the time and the chance of producing these things. And they will be working on connectors and linkers and these mimics and the gestures they have to say. But you have to be happy with these things. Cycle, cycles, this is a cycle. A, a sign of their cycle, the down their cycle with the label, and they will find the cycles. That's what I want for my students with this level. Or, for example, these students should have more freedom when choosing topics or taking roles in groups. Some of the students do need this freedom, this sense of freedom. And freedom doesn't mean that they have to do whatever they want. For example, you want them, this is like for little kids. You offer them, you want any fruit for the set? No. The answer is no. You tell them, what do you prefer? Apple or banana? And they will say apple. They're going to eat fruit. That's what you wanted. So give them options. Not freedom in the sense of you can do whatever you want. That's going to be crazy. No one believes that. Give them options. You can, you can do this or that. Three options. Okay, I don't care. Five options. You have four weeks, four groups, sorry. You have five options. But you know those five options work properly. Or one thing that really works with all of you is a task that was previously done by others so that they can see which is the final result for this. Okay? So you tell them, this is what other classmates did last year. I gave them the same tools you have. You have to organize this like this. If I was an arts teacher or if I was a physical education teacher or whoever, I know very well, and this happens to you also, that if someone tells you, how things work, learning this is going to be much easier. And doing and following the steps is going to be much easier again. And 
For those students with the attention deficit disorder, if a task or activity exercise cannot be finished, you have, you have to give them a second option. You have to give them extra time. Students with dyslexia that we mentioned before, it is the same. It's the same. I mean, we have to give them, what, other options. Maybe we cannot make, we're not going to mention exams, tests, but not reading tests. These guys need oral conversations with you to tell you what they really need to say. For example, and this is in red. Add a collage element like different types of paper. Color tape, clothes pieces, introduce a way to tear, wrinkle, or fold. And why in red? Because we need keywords. That's what we need. We need them to identify the keywords of your subject for this topic. For example, tell me five keywords, my colleague from Almeria. Five keywords, ten words that you use in physical education and that your students have to know. Perhaps, per, uh, line up. Line up. Uh, run. Run. Job. Uh, rest. Rest. Push-ups, for example? Yeah. Do you do you push-ups? Yeah. Push-ups. Push ups, sit ups. Um, what else? Yeah. I mean, this is this is the language that they need for your subject. So forget about many other complex things that are going to make you concerned. Students get lost, but keep on repeating the same structures, strategies with these kids. And at the end, when you say these things, they will learn and recognize colored tape. And they will, maybe they don't know what tape is or what color it is, but when you say notebook and get this, the sound goes here and this is notebook. I don't care how this is spelled. This is notebook. And this is laptop. I don't care if lap is because this means lap and this is on the top. I don't care about that. What I need is sound and an action. And that could be good. Another one, use the materials they might want. This is very important. I'm finishing now, one minute. Why? Because sometimes you know that these kids are really special and they want to use their own material. They want to use this. Okay, again, options. Options for these kids. And options are going to have an effect on the final product, on the final evaluation, on the final outcome, because they will be happy doing things with what they have. Begin a lesson by showing what you want them to do and present the first steps as a project, as I told you. Or, for example, you mentioned of the autists. Visual artists for autists, the key to show their abilities. An autist will never show how good he or she is doing something in an oral way. So this is going to be especially good for these kids. So these autist students will be, let's say, more involved in your lessons than in any other lessons along the day. And this is something we have to know and we have to bear in mind. Okay, I don't have the time, but you will have this. This is like, to finish with, I mean, I think that we should never forget that we are the bridge. We teachers are the bridge. The person who will break down barriers for those students who need an extra push, an extra doses of care and attention on your side, because we are all teachers and we are here to make things easy for these students, okay? And that's it. That's my presentation today. Thank you very much for your attention and for being here. Thank you.